All right. Well, this part of the fence that I'm doing, I've got to replace a bunch of posts that have gone, uh, rotted off at the bottom. These are cedar. Uh, most of them, uh, even if the outside is rotted, it's the outside of it, it was, was just the, uh, the bark and um, the core of it, the center of it, is still perfectly fine. And these are rock solid. But every now and then a termites would get in or uh, our ants would get in and then they would uh, cut it off. See, this one's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the logs out from underneath oak trees. So I don't want the cedars getting up into the oaks, sucking up all of the moisture and then killing the oaks. These are heritage oaks. These are great big. But you don't even see it because it's all, all tangled up in a whole bunch of post-sized cedars. So right there is about six or eight cedars that I'm going to cut down uh, for posts. So let me go ahead and do the first one. So you can see that it's still up in the still up in the cedar. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave this one, uh, and I'm going to cut it off like that. Uh, that way, I can uh, nail the wire to it and draw it a little tighter if I need it. This this strand's plenty tight. It's just the top that's still a little loose, and that's because as I pull it up, the posts kind of square up, and then the top strands ends up being a little loose. Sometimes I put a bar in there and twist it to tighten it up. Other times I put nails around the edges to tighten it up. Uh, or if I find a tree, a living tree, I'll go ahead and attach it to it. So let me go ahead and just cut this off. I cleaned it up as high as it will go. I need to move the camera back so you all don't get hit. But I'm going to cut that at an angle. I'm going to let it fall and then I'm going to drag it out, delimit and uh, clean it up for a post. that I already tightened. Sure. Sure. Why So I'm six foot, so I'm cutting the post as tall as me. So I'm just using me as a reference. Where I was putting it, there is a, uh, a log. Anyway, I'll, I'll cut that after I put it in the ground. Where I was putting it, there was uh, roots in the ground. So I don't know if I'll get two foot deep or 18 inches or what. So let me put it in the ground first and then I'll go from there. 
as I clean, I, I also like to delim everything to so make coyote fence at the same time. So I'm a little slower logging than most guys because I'm saving the limbs. Those limbs will eventually become the ceiling, um, the roof of the reciprocal ceiling. And then uh, I'll, over that, I'll put crushed lava, pumice stone. And over that, I'll put concrete with uh, um, mica in it so that it's lightweight. Uh, also, it's heat resistant. Uh, concrete so that my roof will be poured concrete over cedar over pumice stones over coyote fence and then I'll have a great haul that way so but it takes me a while to get anything delimbed went wrong in that cut the winds blowing pretty hard so even though I put an angle in it the wind grabbed the top of the thing and twisted it and dropped it right on my fence and uh, fortunately, I, I don't have the whole thing stretched, you know, but it would have, I would have had to restretch that, uh, aggravating a little bit. But you could see right away that the oak tree that you didn't notice before, now you notice. So there's a lot of other cedar in there, uh, post-sized cedar. I'm going to get them out as well, again, in six-foot sections. Well, look at that old oak tree breathe now. So I've got uh, three of them removed, which gave me six posts. And then I have a giant post there that's uh, cut, but it's a widow maker. It's all tangled up up there. And you can see that the cedar gets in there and rubs a rough spot. And then beetles can get into the oak tree and kill the oak tree. I'm going to leave that one. It's just at the edge of the... Uh, Oak tree's roots, uh, I might use it for my roof here shortly, but I'm gonna leave it for now. So uh, what I need to do next, I moved a couple of the logs down there. I'm marking wherever uh, there's a loose log. Put a log in place. I'm gonna go ahead with the rest of this evening and strip what I have here, uh, you know, down so I could put it in the ground. Uh, you know, the, the white, uh, the white um, ring that uh, that'll rot and and um, waste away, but the uh, heart wood that won't rot. So, so I'm only going to strip the bark from a, you know, 18 inches of this. <clears throat> the sap wood will waste away. Uh, I could get oil and I could uh, oil that all up. But in the sun, this this the bark will uh, the bark will disappear <laughs> in the sun. I got to get this job done, you know. Uh, perfection is the enemy of of uh, progress. <laughs> and uh, when you everything's got to be perfect, then you get paralyzed. It's just important just to go. I mean, look at these logs. Whoever put these in 50 years ago, all those posts. I quite doubt that they. They put any preservatives on them, right? But I'm pretty sure that they would have stripped the bark off. If I was in a dry cabin, I would uh, get a pressure washer out and pressure wash this. Let me get some gloves on. This is all filled with sap. If I get these in place, 
two thirds of this fence will be back up. <clears throat> That'll make me pretty happy. The cattle are scared of electric wire, so wherever there was a gap, I went ahead and put in uh, electric wire, but it doesn't have a charge on it because, you know, it's broken electric wire. So uh, I need to get the barbed wire up as soon as I can because I don't want to train the cattle uh, not to fear electric wire. And that's what will happen. They'll graze next to it and bump it, and then they'll go, hey, that didn't hurt me. And before you know it, they'll start pressing against electric fence. I don't want that. <clears throat> Cattle can overrun electric fence if they're determined, right? Well, let's not make them determined. And I'm just getting so tired. I'm just beyond tired. Of the day, in fact. Add up the uh, time it takes to do a log, suddenly $28 doesn't seem too bad for a five or six inch round, six foot log treated. <laughs> Obviously, I'll replace these every, you know, couple of years. I'll find the loose ones and put them in. Because <laughs> uh, this is a lot of work. My only goal that I'm doing this is just to keep the animals away from the house during construction. They're just <clears throat> so bad. Basically, I don't want to leave a little, little safe spot for termites to get underneath there. I'm, <clears throat> that's all the bark would do, would be hold an insect. I don't want that. <clears throat> the sapwood will rot away about five years, but that heartwood will stay for, well, you're all seeing 50 years or more. I might be exaggerating to say the fence is 50 years, but it's every bit of 30. You see the trees that are stuck in it. Some of them are sizable. I might not be exaggerating at 50. The barbed wire has a weird old timey look about it each. Each piece of barbed wire is flat metal. The barbs are flat metal. Nowadays, it's made of the same, the barbs are made of the same thing the wire's made of. But this, the barbs are made of a different material. Well, I got a log stripped. Let's go ahead and replace this post here. I'll drill out one side and then the other. It's by that oak tree, so I don't know if I'll hit a rut. We get lucky. And it will just be luck if I uh, am able to drill a hole all the way through. Oh, I'm getting lucky. Ah, oh, the way down to there before I hit a rut. Oh, pretty happy. Fills right back up. <laughs> All right. Gotta get the way. It 
call this sugar sand when it's like that. It's a good name for it. However much I pull out, that's how much it goes back in. Still, I feel pretty good about this. these up and see if there's boards inside here on my sawmill. Well that looks pretty good. A little loose but I'll stretch that and make it look good. Well I'll get all that cleaned up at my leisure but I have to continue on. Uh, but there you go, a harvest pole in there that just came right out of the uh, cedar that was in the background there. Uh, only thing left in there is the tops, and I'll, I'll hook onto those with the tractor and pull them out. The cedar looks a lot better, a lot healthier. I have that caught cedar tangled up in there. I'll get that out later on today. But uh, harvesting poles, this saved me 28 bucks a piece uh, for equivalent wood poles. Eventually, the uh, what's happening with these poles is the sapwood will, will rot away eventually leaving the center post so this one's a little skinny but uh, some of them are six inches around uh, as well you know you can see how thick the hardwood is in that one and that's not going anywhere so uh, but I'm gonna guess these the what's here this one was a skinny one see how it rotted down just to the hardwood and the sapwoods falling apart but the hardwood's still there I mean that's rock hard I'm nailing back onto it just fine so it does take a while. This was this five. I cleared five cedars in about two hours. Uh, five cedars gave me uh, about uh, ten, well, ten post, but that one I'm going to leave whole and a pile of coyote sticks. So what is that? Uh, $280 I saved in post and then uh, the cedar sticks. Um, I don't know, you know, if I bought flashing for that or plywood it'd be you know sixty dollars for a four by eight so let's say uh another uh i'm gonna say three equivalent of three plywood sheets four by eight uh again marine grade because they're cedar and so uh i'll, I'll go with uh you know eighty dollars a sheet times three two hundred forty dollars so a little over five hundred dollars for two hours works in savings now that is money left in my pocket, but that's not necessarily money in my pocket. <laughs> I don't go to the bank and see 500 bucks in there, right? What I have is um, leftover material or, that I can use for my project. My chickens are following me. I kind of wish they wouldn't. They're, they're way out here and I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. They do like me, but they like me from afar. All right, so <clears throat> still going down. I got three football fields there to my, my uh, well, maybe not that far, two maybe, 
not quite half and I'll put in a couple more gates and I need some more poles too. 